Yeah, good question. So the ordering of the clauses is somewhat constrained. And the flowchart that you might have found, and in fact, there's some in the slides, I think in Monday's lecture, is an accurate description of what's allowed to go where. So maybe we can pull one of those up. Maybe I can tell you which parts you can totally ignore. So the recursive stuff we're not covering. Um, we actually used to cover it in 61A, but students didn't like it. And it's not used that much in practice. And um, it's not quite as flexible as recursion in other programming languages. It's got like a lot of constraints and memorizing those constraints is a pain. So um, distinct, so all does nothing. It's just like, uh, some people like saying select all, but it, it sort of has no effect. Um, it's just like saying select. Distinct will give you unique rows, which we don't talk about, but it is possible. So it's nice to know that that's an option. If you ever wanted to like get a bunch of rows, but there's duplicates and you want to get rid of the duplicates, it's a one word thing. The result column part we do cover, and that's, you could have a star or you could have a, a column name or you could have some expression, right? Um, and then, so you always describe the columns, that's the result column separated by commas. And then um, you, this says you can have a from or you cannot have a from. Now, if you don't have a from, you're always gonna have just one row. Um, and, and so, you have, so to have like literal values here. So you can like say select one and that has no from. But most of the time you have a from. And if you ever want more than one row, you need a from. So from basically tells you what tables you're taking as input. And there you separate them by commas. This thing called a join clause is kind of like a mixture of uh, from and where um, with an alternate syntax. It doesn't let you do anything that you couldn't do before. So we don't teach it in this class, um, but it does exist. So instead of writing like uh, from table one comma table two, you can write table from table one join table two, uh, but it doesn't give you any like additional power or anything like that. It's just the alternate syntax that we left it out. Mm. Well, in the SQLite documentation, every box has its own flow diagram somewhere. So there's a separate page on oh. the flow diagram for a result column, which tells you what a result column is. I so see. let me get it. Well, maybe I'll live with these boxes for a minute. But yeah, so every one of these has its own grammar. And this one is like any expression. And an expression has its own grammar. You can write names and you can write pluses and minuses and stuff like that. And that's all described. Got it. And you're allowed to have as and the column alias or you're not. Or you can skip the as. Okay, so um, yeah, so you fill these things in with like keywords and expressions and things like that. Um, where we talk about, and you're right, like group by has to come after where and after from if it's there at all. So this path says you could skip okay. it, but if you're going to have it, it's got to come after from and after where. The reason having is over here instead of down here is that you can only have having if you've already had group by. If you're going to group by, then you can, and having is about filtering whole groups, but it doesn't make sense to filter groups unless you've grouped. So you can say group by, and then you can either have a having clause or you can skip it. But if you have it, it's got to follow group by. Windowing we don't cover, and lists of values we don't cover, but it's pretty straightforward. You just list out the values. And, um, and the only thing that oh, is like order by. not obvious, yeah, order by is down there and limit. It's just like if you want the first limit. eight rows, then you write limit. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing that's not really clear in this diagram is what the compound operator is. I think that's the unions. So this basically says you can select, and then if you do a union, you can select again. You can. We don't cover that in this course. You won't see it in 61A. Uh, we do it a fair amount in data 100 if you want to like extend what you know about SQL. Yeah, I mean, the story there is sometimes you want to do your table processing in two steps. You want to like build one intermediate table and then select from that. And so sometimes the, the most convenient way to do that is to have a select with uh, another select within the from. So if you look at the 
table or subquery grammar, you'll see that one option is to have another select in there. But in this class, we just name the table uh, instead of having select within select, but it is possible. Good question. So min and max are part of the result column grammar. So they're uh, part of this expression, um, which maybe I can guess the URL. Oh, I did. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, okay. Well, in any case, this says that you're allowed to have syntax that looks like you're allowed to write max parenthesis. Oh. Okay. Close parenthesis. So it's like one of the many options of writing an expression. And expressions also have things like two plus three, and um, you can refer to particular columns by the table name dot the column or just the column name. Um, schemas we haven't talked about. So there's like a little bit of stuff in here, like casting from integers to floats we haven't talked about, but it's possible. So there's like some other stuff that you can do in the language um, that's, that's, you know, slightly more complicated than what we cover in this class, but not much. Um, and yeah, and then like, uh, what about if statements? Those are built in. Um, this is covered in data 100, but if you really want to like choose, yeah, basically if you want like an if then else kind of thing happening in order to construct a column from another table, it's possible in SQL. Um, we just don't really do it in this class. Yeah, so SQLite is one database. So there's more to uh, an interpreter for uh, SQL than just the interpreter. There's also the data storage and the, um, the way it handles simultaneous connections. And um, yeah, the optional lecture on next Friday, I think kind of goes over this, but there's just like, there's more to a database management system than just the interpreter, but the interpreter is part of it. And the SQL interpreter for all these different databases are pretty much the same. There's always like some subtleties, but they're pretty much the same. So SQLite's version of SQL is not very different from MySQL's version of SQL or uh, Postgres or whatever. Um, but SQLite is a very small application because it doesn't like run a persistent server that store that uses the um, that's like designed to be accessed from lots of different computers over the network. It really just run, it stores all of the data in a file. And this single file is sort of the simplest way in which you would represent a whole database is uh, just to like stick all the data in one file or in memory. So it's sort of like the simplest version of a functioning database management system, which is why we use it in this class. It's like really easy to install. It's easy to get going. Um, you don't have to worry about like permissions and network access and stuff like that. Um, and so it's true, like this, this schema that you're seeing is particular to SQLite, but it's not any different than the SQL that you'll use in other database systems, really. It's just uh, SQLite makes it easy to run these expressions and see what they do. You can create a table and use all these commands on it. Yes, that's true. So maybe you can see the grammar on the left and a prompter on the right. And uh, here's the table from lecture, which has a names column and a fur column. And I guess we can come up with some stuff to do. So um, yeah, like this result column part is where you'd write things like name and dogs.fur and stuff like that. Um, from, I think, your only choices are to write the name of a table or to write a comma separated list of multiple names of tables. If you have two tables with the same name, it's not that, it's that if the two tables you have both have a column with the same name, then you need an S. So like, Trivially, if you've got the same table twice, then it's gonna have columns with the same name because they're the same table. But even if you had two different 
tables, but they both had a name column, then you'd need to add them so you can refer to which name column you're talking about. And so you can name them whenever you want, but now there's no one name column. You've joined a dog's row with another dog's row, which means you have two different name columns. You have to refer to which one you're talking about. So within select, there's like a fair amount of expressions you can write. Um, the basic story is you can write the name of a column or you can write a aggregator function on a name of a column like max or something like that. Okay. Um, that's kind of it. And then in from, you either write the name of a table or you write a comma separated list of multiple tables and you can give them aliases. And that's kind of it. Um, Got it. Where, I think the story is you write where and then one expression um, where you can refer to any of the stuff in the tables that you've joined. So you could say like where a dot fur equals b dot fur or something like that. And that's going to check for every joined row. Are these two columns the same? It's kind of hard to see what's going on in this output. This output is showing me just the name of one of the dogs. But if I were going to compare the fur for two dogs, then I think it would make more sense to show both of their names so that I can kind of verify that, yeah, these are two dogs with the same kind of fur. OK, so you see all the pipes. What else? And then group by, OK, so when you group, you typically aggregate. Like every time you group, you're putting multiple rows in the original table or join table into one group, and you get one row per group. So you want to kind of like combine all the rows that you put in the same group into one row. How do you do that? Well, you do it by aggregating. So if I'm going to group by fur here, Oh, that's right. We could, we could still have a where. We could say, like, I want to look at pairs of dogs that have the same fur. And then I could say, oh, I want to group by the fur. Now, which fur? Well, they have the same fur, so it doesn't matter which one. So now you're, like, grouping by fur. And um, what does max of names do? Well, that's going to give you the latest in the alphabet name for all the dogs with this kind of fur. So. There's like one group that has Abraham Clinton and Delano in it, and the maximal dog in that group is Delano. There's another group that's got Barack Eisenhower and Grover in it, and the maximal dog, because like latest in the alphabet is Grover. And then there's, I guess, one other group that's got Fillmore and Herbert in it, and Herbert is the maximal one there, or the one with this latest in the alphabet. Yeah. I would say yes. Like the whole point of group by is to take multiple rows and put them together into one row. But if you're not saying how you're combining them, then it's just going to like give you the first one. And it's rare that that's what you want. I mean, almost always what you want is it's possible that you want the first one because you've like sorted them in a particular way or something like that. But much more common that when you group, you then aggregate in order to figure out how to take all the items in a group and turn them into one row. And having just gets rid of a group. So you could say like having uh, a count of the group be greater than two. And I think that will get rid of the Herbert Fillmore group. Why didn't, why didn't it get rid of it? Uh, oh, because uh, Fillmore, Herbert, and Herbert and Fillmore are all in that group. So there's actually four elements there. So if we wanted to get rid of that, then we have to stay greater than one. OK, so we got rid of the smallest group. What is this number four? This is the number of rows in the joined table that passed the where clause. So the number of rows in here after we group. So we group this, these two and these two into uh, one group of, uh, I, I don't remember what fur they have. I guess we could figure it out. Stop it. So, so when we when we group by that group had four things in it, and the star refers to the four things, or, or it refers to like the mini table of the four things. So we count that, and we get four. Yeah. So any aggregation you do in this having expression is going to apply to uh, the group that you're considering keeping or throwing away. So you go through each group and you compute the value of whatever this is. 
for the rows in that group before they've been combined. So it's kind of before this max has happened. You have a group that's got some number of rows in it. And what defined this group? Well, it's all, each group corresponds to one value of fur. So there's like a long fur group, there's a short fur group, and there's a curly fur group. And if a particular group doesn't have more than four rows in it, then it's out. Having says keep all the ones where the group has at least uh, four. Count is a special function, aggregator function, and that it doesn't really care which column you're talking about, which is why you write count star. It's kind of a quirk. Like you might want to find the maximum value in a column, but count isn't really about any particular column. It's about the whole row, like how many rows there are. So you don't talk about a particular column. You typically just write count star to say count all the rows. That's right. If you wrote uh, a dot name or a dot fur or something like that, then you would get the same Got answer. It. It's just not typically done because, well, you know, why are you counting a column? You should be counting the whole row. And if we did order by, we do order by some, uh, okay, some let's, call. yeah, let's look at order by since that's sort of the last thing that's interesting. Um, you've done all this work to figure out which rows are in the result. And we know how this is going to come out. This is going to come out as just Delano Grover. These are the things you're ordering. Yeah, exactly right. So, so this like arrow is sort of, you know, I mean, this is just describing the syntax of the language. It's that like after you've written this whole select statement, then you're allowed to put an order by at the end. But what happens with order by is it takes in all the stuff that you've built so far and figures out how to order those rows. So it's kind of like a last, last act of the select statement is to pick an order. Um, that's also true if we were this far in um, and we really thought like, oh, there should be like the... One other thing, yeah. One more thing. Then we yeah. could just select that other thing. Hello. And it would be there as another row. Order by a fur might cause a problem because we're ordering a one column table that's got Delano and Grover and hello. And it doesn't have any a dot fur anymore. So if we really wanted oh, to yeah, order right. by, I think what we do is give this column a name. How about Q? And then we could go through all this stuff. Uh, where the fur is the fur and the having count and we get hello in there. And now it's time to order by, and we could order by Q to put these in alphabetical order, which they already are. If we were, if we really wanted to test that this was doing something, I think that the thing we would union in would have to go between Delilano and Grover, like Fred. And then when we order by Q, it will put Fred in the middle as opposed to sticking it at the end. Union would normally put it at the end, but ordering makes it go in the middle. I think there's two cases. There's mm -hmm. one where, let, let's say you're gonna group. So that means at the end of the day, you're gonna have one row per group in the, out, in the output. Uh -huh. There's one case in which the original rows that you're grouping, you only want some of them. So you just put a where that describes which ones you want, and then you group. And, um, and you might as well think of it as like where happens first and then group happens second. So you get rid of some of the rows and then you group the rest. Um, there's a second case where after you group, you want to know whether you're keeping some groups and you're getting rid of some groups. And why mm -hmm. is that? Well, you're going to have one row per group and you want some of those rows and you don't want some of those rows, but it might be based on the things that you've grouped as opposed to the result of the grouping and aggregating. And so that's what the having clause is for. There's a third case where like after you've done all the grouping and aggregating, and now you have one row per group, only then do you have the information you need in order to decide whether you want that row or not. So you've like grouped to figure out, I don't know, how many different colors there are 
for each for the dogs in each generation and uh you've like done all this computation and you've decided like oh now i have one row per group but i only want some of those rows based on what's in those rows mm -hmm. then what you do is you perform the grouping using one select statement get that result give it a name with create table and then select again from that result with a where clause i see okay so um and and you don't actually need to use create table like there's it's possible to have a select statement within a from clause of another select mm -hmm. statement in order to do this kind of two-stage manipulation um but at the end of the day like if what you want to do is write a where expression that's about the result of grouping mm -hmm. instead of a where expression that's about the original rows then you're really doing a two-step thing where you I first see. want to group with one select and then you want to use where on the result of that select yeah good question no uh all the the mutation operations are out of scope for the final so we're not going to do any dropping or updating or inserting um they're pretty handy to know mm -hmm. so might as well learn them but they're in the optional lecture i think the one we'll do next friday and uh yeah they weren't always in the course. And then it turned out, like to build any real application, you're going to end up doing some mutation. Like uh, for all the examples of how to learn SQL, you don't really need it. But when you actually want to build something that is useful to the world, then you end up inserting rows into a table over time. So, um, so if you want to like be practical with this kind of stuff, then you might as well learn them. And they're pretty easy to learn. I mean, like all the complicated stuff is in select and everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, temporary tables are out of scope. They used to be in the course, um, and they kind of got voted off the island by past students who didn't really like them, and uh, past staff members who didn't really like them. I mean, they are used sometimes in SQL, so it's worth knowing what they are, but um, they're used less often than uh, all the other stuff that we teach. So they're kind of like a fringe or advanced topic. But you know, I can tell you the basic story is that there's this option to write with and then create some tables which you give names to, and then you can refer to those names when you build your final table. Um, okay. That's kind of the whole story. So there isn't really anything special about it, except that unfortunately they have like a slightly different syntax for how you name them than you normally would. So it's kind of like a little bit of memorizing to get good at with clauses. Uh, mm -hmm. but but again, like all the interesting stuff is in select statements within the select statement. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's just like setting temporary variables before you do some like complicated computation in another programming language. Uh, good question. What about commas versus ands and ors? When you have a where, you can only write one expression. Now, um, a is greater than two and B is greater than two is one big expression. It's an and expression. So you can have like multiple sub expressions connected by these logical operators and an or in order to big one, build one big expression. But I don't think there's ever any comma in the where clause. I think it's always ands and ors to describe how these different sub expressions are supposed to be combined together. And commas mostly show up between columns and between tables. And um, oh, yeah, and I guess you can group by multiple conditions. Uh, OK, so if you say like select one is less than two, then it will tell you that's fine. That one is kind of coming out of nowhere. That's just SQL's way of saying true. And uh, if you put this the other way around, then it would tell you false. So um, uh, SQL doesn't let you say two is less than three and three is less than, oh, it does? Hmm. I kind of have no idea what it's doing there. It will be, it, it's like Python lets you do this kind of thing. Maybe SQL does too, but it's, uh, what exactly this means can sort of vary. Like, uh, I bet the following will fail. 
Yeah, it does. This says this is false, but it looks true, right? Four is bigger than three and three is bigger than two. But I think that's not huh. what it's actually doing. I think what it's doing is converting that into the number one. And then you check that one is greater than two. And it turns out that that's not true. So basically, you don't want to connect um, multi like more than two expressions oh, yeah. in this way. The way to do it, to be just like very explicit about what's going on, is to say, oh, four is greater than three and three is greater than two. That's like unambiguous what that means, and it's going to do the right thing. And Python's pretty unusual in that it allows this. Uh, most programming languages don't. Let's see if I know the difference between display and print. I believe that one ends a new line and the other one does not, and they're otherwise the same. So if I display Uh, hot and then display dog. I get it all in one line. Whereas if I print hot and then print dog, I get it on two lines. So print is like display this followed by a new line. I think that's the only difference. Could be wrong. 